went and got the insurance reinstated on the 59 Chevy, so yeah. it's ready to go. All right. What are your thoughts on that? You're uh, ready I to think we're going to uncover it. Uncover it well, and uncovering is good, yeah. get the battery hooked up and yeah. get it going? Yeah. We'll do yeah. that. Right now. Okay. Well, today is a big day. We're going to uncover the old car, hook the battery up, and get it going. I don't start the car at all during the winter. It's been parked since October. The reason being, I think it's hard as heck on the engine to just start them up and let them go. You get all that condensation in the crankcase and in the exhaust system. And uh, then it rusts things out. So unless you start them up and take them out on the road and warm them up thoroughly, don't even bother starting them. You'll do more damage just starting them and letting them run than not running them. And these people that just start them up and let them run for a few minutes, that's really bad. And hopefully the noise of everything around here doesn't uh, disrupt everything. The neighbors over here are getting a new roof and the neighbors over there are getting all new driveway, sidewalk, all the concrete's being done. So we got some people fixing up their places here, which is kind of nice. This, this house here was built in 1964. My folks bought it brand new. Just kind of up to the center if you can. And then the same with the other side, then we'll fold it over one more time. All oh, shined up nice. All oh, shined up. See here. Yeah, it was, what, was it October when I put the cover on? Yeah. It was the first time it's been off, completely off since uh, October. Well, you can see dust on it from the cover. Yeah, yeah, the cover does. But it does help keep it clean. Yeah. All right, I'll get the battery, the battery maintainer disconnected here. Whoops, I guess I should unplug it first, shouldn't I? Okay, it's unplugged. I think they're 916, so I don't remember. Well, I got the whole bunch up so. Okay. If it's not 916, we got a couple other sizes. It's 916. Okay, the battery cables. I'll make sure that one's snug too. Alright, I'm going to crank it until the oil light goes out, until it has oil pressure. Then I'll Set the choke and we'll get it cranked up. I want to check the coolant and the oil. You know, if I could get the radiator cap off, I would check the coolant. There we go. That coolant's good. Oil's good. Power steering, uh, I can't see a fluid, but it's cold, so it'll probably be all right. Great fluid still. Do you have a paper towel handy? Uh, yeah. You can give me one of those little crummy ones. Okay, and you'll notice how much quieter the starter is with that new flywheel when I go to crank it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me find the keys over there. Okay. Yeah, that's well, it's been a mild winter, so maybe you can take this to get going. You know how in the past years when it's been mild, it's been hard to start, and in the cold, bitter cold winters, it starts like it was driven yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's see what it does. I'm going 
big oil pressure up first. <laughs> Just, that's just getting the oil pressure up. Now we'll see if it starts. Hit the cellar and get the pole back. Look at the size of that trunk. Yeah. Look at that 1959 Montgomery Ward cooler that you bought new in 1959. I keep just some extra goodies in there. It's always Already. good to carry extra goodies. Already for a picnic. Yeah, it is. Nothing like having a 59 cooler and a 59 cars. Or you want to go for a ride? I got the heat on. I'm warm. I'm warm and it's lovely and I'm ready to go for a ride. It was 1959 Chevrolet Beauty. quarter past four last fall <laughs> the battery is well maybe four because it's been the battery's been hooked back up for about so, yeah. well, you just have to disconnect the battery and then tell I it. just pull a thing what out and turn it. Right? What time is it? It's um eleven thirty eight. Eleven thirty eight.
gas in this? No. No, I took the battery cable off and took the battery container off. I changed the oil on it before I brought it out for the night. And I changed the brake in oil out of the gearbox too, the transmission. So the transmission's got about almost 700 miles on it since I rebuilt it. See the brake warning light blinking away there, showing the parking brakes on. That's the oil and oil generator and the brake warning light. Temperature gauge. All right, here. If the battery goes dead, I'll just shut it off. How many turns that big wheel do you have to do to go from
from lock to lock about six turns from six, lock to lock from center to lock is three turns it's a big steering gear ratio six turns from lock to lock yeah. actually it has power steering and the power steering gear is a little less to turn than the ratio than the non-power steering you think the non-power steering is from lock to lock six turns i think the power steering one's maybe five turns but it's oh, still a lot not of, that many uh, it's difference. still like like if i turn my truck that much i'd do a u-turn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in this yeah you got to turn the oil they did it and they put the big steering wheels on too because most cars then didn't have power steering so that way you could you know women could steer the car petite people that didn't have the muscle to Turn the wheel, can turn it with the big wheel and the big steering gear ratio. Make sure no cars are coming. I think maybe there's one coming there. There's one coming. But this power steering is so easy on this car, you almost don't even feel the road anymore. When yeah. they put power steering in cars back then, yeah. it was totally power steering. Yeah. You need to blow your nose. Right there it is. Oh, I didn't know I pulled out like that. Yeah. And then you can get your Kleenex out and then. Push it back. Yeah, oh, that's pretty good. Huh. Oh. And the cup holders on this car has cup holders, see? Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, Aren't they, sure isn't that amazing that people is. act like that was an innovation? And here, look at these stylish, very usable cup holders. I promise if you put your coffee there, you won't spill a drop. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oop, it says stop. Yep. As long as we're looking at old things, we we'll look at old Howard. But I want to show you. I'm not as old, quite as old as the car. Oh, okay. He's younger than the car. Yeah, yeah the car's a little older than that. Double clutch it there for first because it's not synchronized to first. Uh -huh. And I still ground it. Yeah, that. Look, look at there. You don't see that in cars anymore, a clutch. In fact, a lot of the new cars don't even come put the brakes on for you if you're not paying attention. And yeah, this the, car doesn't have any computers. No, no computer. zero. zero computers. Well, that's the radio even has tubes in it, so it has really? to warm up. <laughs> oh my lord! Tubes in a radio. We'll turn it on and see how long it takes to start playing. Huh. I turned the radio on this morning for the first time in a couple of years, and it worked. There it goes. Call one eight hundred nine one six 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 nine eight now. Better, better. Let's get at her. In the small town of Letterkenny. There you go. Front says you think your girlfriend looks sexy when she's wearing a hat. Those are the main four corners of the big village of Romeo, Romeo, Michigan, USA. It's a very nice town. Probably uh, a couple of thousand people, and. Uh, one stop light, this is it, and this is, as I say, the main four corners, and uh, lived here for a long time, very nice town to live in and for to raise this follower over here that's lived here for a long time. Next drive, next drive. We're going into the Ace Hardware. Can you make this turn or you can't go around the corner? Whoa, it's tight. Oh, for a big old limousine car like this. The only thing that's this, this size anymore are pickup trucks. Yeah. Anyway, there we are. Get going here. Here. Got it? Uh-huh. Remember the 59 Chevy that was in there? Oh, for God, time? yes. Oh, yes. I stripped that thing clean apart. Yeah, I remember it. 
can remember a number of 59 Chevys that we that were laying around rotting. What a shame that we got parts off. Occasionally hear it as you drive along. It just makes a funny little sound when it whines. Back in 78 when I bought this car, yeah. I drove it to high school every day. And this is the road I took to the high school right here. And just up here at this light is where the high school is. Well, we'll just have to take a look this at the high school. So I drove this car to high school. And there's the school right there. Good place to go to school. As long as you don't drink the water. Oh. And did you mention how much you paid for this car and what year you paid bought it? I bought it March 11th, 1978, and I paid $75 for it. I'll give you 100 for it right now. So, as I remember, you taught your dad into buying this car. Well, you told me if I wanted a car to just go out and earn the money and buy it, and I did. <laughs> I totally did. Uh -huh. My senior year of high school, I was in the co-op program, and I worked for Romeo Community Schools at the school bus garage, doing oil changes and tune-ups and brakes and fixing tires and burned-out bulbs and just basic maintenance on the school buses. They had other mechanics there that did the heavy engine and clutches and there were Ford B700 and B750 chassis and they all had the 361 V8 engines in them and they had two barrels if they were the 700 and four barrels if they were the 750s and they all had air brakes and five-speed manual transmissions in them. But that, you know, was 79, so now they're all diesels and diesel pushers, automatics. There's the school bus garage right there where I used to work. That was one of my first jobs, right there. Worked there in 77 and 78, a little bit of 79. The cars stored. The driver grew up. We're all built in 63 and 64. Mostly 63. I'll have to dig out a photo of the house with the 59 Chevy station wagon you had back then parked in the driveway and put it in a video with this car. So, yeah, that'd be neat. <laughs> yeah. Because you had a 59 Chevy Parkwood station wagon I when did. you bought the house, a green and white. Green and white. There was no yeah. garage on this house. It sat right here. And right got... where the pickup is. Yep. Often. Yeah. One thing that I do need to do is fix the turn signal. Sometimes when you put the right indicator on, it's working there. Sometimes it doesn't come on and the left's always fine, but this is the turn signal switch right here. It's mounts on the bottom of the steering column and it's cable driven and that slides back and forth to change from right or left and the center is off. And when I take the car back home I'll do a video on changing the turn signal switch. 